Hello guys, welcome back. It is a new week, right? So we have a lot of jobs to do this week. We have, um, I must do water changes in these Neo Caradina tanks. I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And I think my water might be slightly going bad, but we'll check it today. Do some water changes. I have enough water in that barrel to do the entire rack here, almost to 50%, right? So the some tanks that won't be getting changed because like this one up in the corner up here that you can't quite see. Um, that tank will be getting drained and we're going to set up on, the, on this rock over here probably next week, right? So all these will be drained half down and uh, yeah, we're going to fill them back up. And guys, I think for the rest of the week we will probably try and go on a nettle hunt because yeah, I love nettles and I can't find any here at all, right? So that's one of the things we must do. Um, another thing that we must do as well is start to deal with these tanks that are in my garage outside because I have another one to go up here and we have another one to um, drain, take apart and reseal and add it to my shrimp little office upstairs. Right? So you have all that to look forward to but before we do that guys, mm, bottoms up with the coffee because yeah, I need it in the morning. Mm. Let's get started. Alright guys, I'm actually holding you here so just be careful you don't go heads first into this container. Now this is my container that I normally use for uh, preparing my RO water and stuff, right? but recently I've been changing it to holding tap water as well and yeah, since I've been putting tap water in here I'm actually noticing a lot of algae and stuff growing on and all the little bits and pieces so um, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Guys if any of you do this in the comment section where you prepare tap water in your RO water container what do you think because yeah, I can see that there's like a brown build up on quite a lot of the stuff here and the cables and whatever else and yeah, that water has to go over here today into our setup here but maybe I should use it quicker than I have been Mark, you're just so lazy I mean I don't know if it even comes out in camera, let me see, I'll try and zoom in a little bit to see if you guys can see, you can just see that, like there's a little brown edge there, now this is mostly in the dark all the time so I'm not sure if the brownness is algae or if it is something to do with iron because apparently we are meant to have high iron here right and that could be true because I've noticed since I've been doing tap water changes with these tanks over here they have went very green and if they're very green is it possible that they could be from a lot of iron in the tap war, which isn't such a bad thing. Is that true guys you think? Let me see. Are you saying yes or no? Anyway, right, let's get some of these tanks drained across here and we'll start doing our water changes. Alright guys, let's get this show on the road. Right, So I have a big uh, hose. <laughs> that sounded so bad. And yeah, we have to actually attach our little filter that we put into the tanks to make sure the shrimp don't go into the pipe because this this end here is probably going to go towards the drain section right so let's see where are you <clears throat> i wonder if this is the right way because this doesn't seem right does it like this i think i may be taking a connector of one second <laughs> guys i have to admit defeat here um i actually can't remember at all what i've done with this stuff to connect this to the drain over there. I'm just getting old, I have no idea what, what my memory is doing nowadays, right? So for today, because I just want to get this done, it doesn't take too long, gives me a little bit of exercise. While my back is good. Gives me a little ex bit of exercise and we're going to do it manually the way we used to do it. So that, what that means is putting this in the tank and draining the tank half down into buckets, putting the buckets into the sink and rinsing and repeating the process for all these tanks here because we have enough water there to fill it back up right so let's get that done all right shrimp let's put you up there for a minute i only have three buckets as well I, guys i have no idea where all my stuff goes it just all goes missing right, so let's get these tanks done first i only have three buckets and we're going to do everything manually right so it will literally be a few minutes for you but for me I'll be standing here for hours. We we're still recording? Guys, I'm going to actually fill these tanks up level by level. So we'll fill these ones, this one and this one on the end up first because I don't want to leave the tanks too long. 
to be dry, right? So I'm just going to grab the pipe work and stuff and we'll start to fill these up. Any minute now. Have it set very low. That isn't very low. That means there's something wrong here. Oh, right here, look. Kink. Top, top, top. Yeah, so let's uh, close that a little bit because if I open it too full, well, there's a kink. There you go. That wasn't so difficult, was it, Mark? Now let's, so let's just fill this up and we'll start the second one. Guys, normally I would actually do this all at the same time, but I don't want to try and do it all at the same time and work the camera. Because, uh, yeah, my memory's gone. I'll just forget that I'm filling up a tank or forget I'm draining it or, or something like that, right? So let's get this filled up. And by the way, the water in this tank was very brown from the Indian almond leaves. to dry the floor with my floor towel foot. <laughs> you know, as this is filling up, I can see there's so much stuff in this water. Got all the shrimp. And they're beautiful. Why, hello there. Let's do this middle tank here. Oh, and of course the cable is around the camera. Let's do this one, because it, it should take it probably Three buckets at least. So let's fill this one up sooner rather than later because yeah, I can see some shrimp on the sponge here and they're well out of the water. Let's have a little zoop in. See if you can spot anything. You see them? I don't want them out of the water too long. So let, let's get this filled up. Alright guys, while that fills up, right, and we have a little coffee break, because it's always coffee time in my house. <laughs> I was wondering, right, when I emptied one of the tanks there, I got some water in my mouth, and guys, I want to know, if you do this, and I want to know, when it does happen, do you spit the water out, or do you swallow it? And I'm being serious, and I don't want anyone with a dirty mind to come in the comments and say, Oh Mark, you're a beast, you shouldn't be on YouTube, blah blah blah, and I'm talking about water changes here because I always just spit the stuff out. Yes, maybe I won't include that part. <laughs> right guys, we have just two more tanks to go. Look at all these little fish. Two more tanks to go, let's get them done. And then that's my Neo Caradina water changes done for the week. So these might take a little bit longer because they're near ground level, which is always the case if you're trying to do, use a siphon to drain something. But yeah, we'll try, try and go down to at least halfway again with these. And you have to be fast with a siphon at this level to make sure it actually starts. Yeah, so we'll be back in a little bit once we actually get all the water out of these tanks. All right, guys, so that's enough water from this tank. Let's start the next one and because these are so slow to scythe now I'm actually going to start to fill the first one while we wait for this one to fill because this is this one will probably be slow as well so let's empty this all right let's get this filled up remote control on let's get the water flowing and that's fast enough for this Right guys, while I'm waiting for this water to drop even more, because I'm taking a lot of water out of this because I have a lot of water left, let's see if we can just take some of this all here because it's quite thick on the glass. All this middle stuff here I get with a melamine foam block, but this stuff here is kind of tough to get off even with that type of block, so let's uh, 
let's do it now while we have the opportunity. It's much easier. Like this. Very good. I'm going to do the other side over here. Before our water level drops too low and fills this bucket below us. That's all I wanted to do was get the worst of that stuff off there. And yeah, let's fill this back up. Alright, so I always give this a little shake like this. Because you will get shrimp stuck to this. Just release them, they'll be fine. And now let's get this out of the way. Let's start to fill our tank up. The water is already here. Like that. It's a job, it's a good one. So I can see Mr. Bristle Nose is in here somewhere. Would have been nice if it made an appearance. Shrimp look healthy. Wow, why is that moving up like that? It's also really nice to see our Sulawesi snail is starting to take off a little bit because yeah, I thought these were in general dying out. There's a baby one there, baby one there, baby one there. There's like three or four just in that little shot. And these guys like hard water. Where are you shrimps? Yeah. Alright guys, last little job involves my hairbrush. A comb as I should say, and it involves just moving all the duckweed to the side so we can actually see inside the tank. Like this. And I have to do this almost every day. All the particles you can see in there are from food I've just placed in a few minutes ago. But yeah. It's looking good, so I think the plan guys is for us to go outside. Let me put you up on the table. Alright. There is our Neocaradina water changes done for the week. That wasn't too difficult. In real time it was probably about an hour, but for you guys it'll be a couple of minutes. So guys, as I said, let's uh, think about what we're going to do next. I do fancy going outside and cleaning this tank to put up here, but I think we'll actually go on a nettle hunt as well. I've been dying to try and find nettles for my shrimp to use, so we'll do that as well. I think we will maybe set up a tank, set up a shrimp tank in here because, uh, yeah, I want to just get things moving along the shrimp room a little bit faster than they are, right? So that's what you have coming up next. All right, guys, hopefully you can hear me speaking here. Today is the day we finally start to drain down this tank here, get it clean and get it into the basement, right? So let's drain it down. And as you can see, this was one of the ones that passed the leak test. So let's get our drainer in here and start to drain it because yeah, we need to clean it and get it into the shrimp room. There you go. This might take about 10 minutes for me, but it'll be one memento for you. There's so much rubbish in this tank. It's so dirty. I'm actually going to try and tip it over and then give it a rinse out with the hose because it's got a lot of sand and stuff in it. I'm quite lucky in that the Glass is pretty thick on this. Let's see, does this come off pretty easy? Yeah, so there's one job done. And uh, yes, let's give this a little blast with the hose first before we actually attempt to clean it because uh, you don't want to be cleaning glass when there's sand on the glass itself. Or it's, and you, so let's get this on. Let's see what we can blast it first. Just a quick blast. Get all the sand. A lot of the sand is like stuck on. Which is odd because yeah, we we actually soaked this for a, more than a good week or two. That's how long it sat here. Just trying to get the worst of the sand out. Right, shrimp, I'm going to add this bucket of lukewarm soapy water like this and we'll see what we can do because this is pretty filthy on the inside yeah, I think we might have our work cut out with this one so yeah I'm going to give this a good clean and uh, I'll show you the results when we're done Alright, 
Let's try this. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's get this emptied and rinsed. Yeah, because there's a lot of rubbish in here. The tank itself is looking pretty clean. You won't be surprised to know there's still a lot of sand in it. But let's uh, give this a squirt with the hose. That's looking much better. I also washed the outside. Let's put it upside down and I'll rinse the other side. And then this can stay here to dry before we move it into the house. There we go. Job is done. Yeah. Alright, let's uh, add this tank, the one that we washed yesterday. You see I've changed my clothes. I'll let it try and dry a little bit. So let's uh, grab this tank. Let's have a little look at it first. Because, yeah, um, I don't think this would be a show tank by any means. Because I can see quite a lot of very heavy water marks and stuff in a minute. This is stuff I could probably get off with uh, vinegar and whatever else. But um, yeah, let's um, pick a side. Oh, my back! Mark, I'm so stupid. I was leaning backwards holding the tank and my back started to go. Oh, when will I learn, guys? When will I learn? So let's get this up there and, you know, stop being a moron. Oh, yeah, that was stupid to do. That was stupid to do. Now this one's okay. This tank is okay. But you know guys, I was wanting to actually add um, Shrimp Mania's filter into this tank, let me show you. Let me see where it's up here somewhere, look. This one here. Shrimp Mania, I remember he sent me this filter quite a while ago. I actually... Yeah, we should use it, we'll put it into this tank up here. And... Well, let's see, can I fit that in there? Oh, it's so close, I can't. It's literally like two centimeters too big, right? So let me pull the tank down there. <sighs> and see. It's alright, guys. It's alright. I know, I know I'm being stupid with my bark and stuff, but. Yep. This is my life. This is my life now. And my bark grows like this quite a lot. Right, so I think we should move the camera down here so you can see in the tank a little bit better. Let's do that. Yeah, this, this looks like it's an all right view. Hey right, guys, let's uh, have a little look at this filter from Shrimp Mania. I quite like it. It's a little under gravel filter. He's made the box himself and the rest is 3D printed. So, I'm going to add this into the back of the tank. Now, the thing that I know that can be wrong with this type of filter is um, they can block up a little bit eventually, right? So you're always better to have two filters in this case with this type of tank. I always have two as it is, but uh, let's, um, let's add in our soil to this little compartment and then we'll stick it up there and we'll fill it with water. All right, maybe you can see a little bit better from up there. Let's turn this tank around, right? So the front, this is the front end here. So it's going to sit in the tank like this. I have tons and tons of other spare sponge filters that we'll eventually put into here, but today the goal is just to get this set up and started running. Right, so we do have some ADA Amazonia. It is my... Oh, it is my soil of choice. It is very nutrient rich, which can be a very good thing and it can be a bad thing. But, um, yeah, it is... If you can get ADA Amazonia, the original one is very, very good. The new one is okay, but I do, I do believe that this one that I'm opening here 
will be discontinued eventually so yeah get this one while you can let's uh, just fill this up let's see now I'm not putting anything underneath this because in my experience anything that we put underneath this will simply clog up over time and I have my ways guys I have many many ways of uh, dealing with pH and stuff nowadays so it won't be an issue and the other thing guys is I might add some soil to the base of this tank here because yeah I, I don't know what it is I'm just not that keen on bare bottom tanks I'm not that keen on it not going to lie they just don't look that great in my opinion and I'm all about the shrimp and looking at shrimp and stuff with my limited vision so, yeah, so this goes right to the bark it's going to be our filter maybe a wee bit to one side so we can put a sponge in this side there and we're going to add in a few scoops of this stuff and guys it literally doesn't matter how this goes in because we're going to add our water right now and it's just going to make a mess of it anyway and eventually the whole tank will clear like this you know what I forgot to put in there is some some bacterial powder it's not 100% necessary but I think it helps in the beginning putting a, at least a little bit bacterial powder in it so yeah maybe we should do that let me see if I have it yes I do I have it right here and guys I'm just going to put in a couple of little pinches like this and this will help seed our tank and I'm going to put some onto a little filter normally I would put this stuff under the soil but yeah well I made a mistake today didn't I live on camera I'm full of mistakes <laughs> right so what we're going to do now is we're going to swap places the can will come down there and the tank will go up there Right, guys I brought you over here just a minute because uh, yeah we need to finish setting up our water I didn't do this yesterday so we need to put in our stuff to do right so we have our RO water here barrel is full power on let's have a little look just to give you an idea of conductivities and all that kind of rubbish right so yeah I'm not sure if you can actually see anything on this at all it's very hard for me to see on camera I should say one right so that is how pure my water is one and uh, yeah I cleaned this out yesterday that's why it's so clean <laughs> But we must add in our pump here guys what it is I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my pumps and stuff not in the water circulating all the time and if they're not on they're not in the water because I found that um, I found that stuff like algae and stuff builds up on the outside of this and I don't want there to be stuff building up on it all the time so when I'm not using this stuff like the hoses like this stuff here yeah it's simply not going to be in there Right, and what I've been doing as well is initially the first pump of this stuff is going into the drain just to clear the pipe if this will work and it worked fantastically right so I turn it off let it just clear itself close it and then this can go on in here and this is going to circulate our water while we add in our minerals because yeah there's no minerals at all in there let's quickly add in our minerals and guys we're aiming for a new number and I've been doing it this way for a while but I've never said it on camera I'm actually aiming for over 300 US Siemens which is like 150 TDS before I was going to 200 US Siemens and I was getting the odd failed malt right so after some cult some con consultation with some shrimp keeping experts that I know because I have a lot of friends in the shrimp keeping world that are like really really good at what they do thank you very much Raymond if you're watching and uh, yeah he suggested putting up my conductivity up to 300 plus 300 and see how I go with that and yeah I've not seen a failed malt since so let's get this in here I think I need something like is it 10 of these maybe let's have a little count three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that was ten. We'll soon find out because we'll take a reading of this in like ten minutes. So this stuff is GH plus. Let me show you because it's not your standard stuff. This is stuff that is made for discus. But when you look at the parameter readings in the back, it says your your GH has to be six, and it says your uh, KH has to be zero. So this is almost identical to your GH salt and mineral B keeping salts that we used before the other ones. I only bought this as well because it was in a much bigger tub. This, I've, guys, I've had this tub for years, so let's let this stir. We'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll see what it's like. Right, guys, that was, I think it was 15 scoops of that salt into 200 litres to make our water 300 US Siemens or 150 TDS. Right, so let's get the water in here. And yeah, yeah, I've been looking for a second filter on this. Let's get the water turned on first. There we go. Yeah, and I'm not too bothered if it floats around and stuff. Because it will all settle again anyway. Which reminds me, must put on this little sticker here. Put a little sticker here for the date of the tank. 13th of the 5th. And guys, we're going to give this as, as much time as needed for there to be no ammonia. And make it shrimp safe. Right, so preferably no ammonia zero nitrate and a little bit of nitrate is fine because uh, that's what your plants live off of yeah, most of my tanks I actually don't get a reading on anything because the tanks are like in perfect harmony but yeah if you overfeed you're going to see various things like that happen so yeah, I have a sponge filter let me just grab it it's going to go in this tank as well it has a little bit moss on to it let me see, can I just grab it here? I can. And this has come from a mature tank. And it's just a little filter, but this one will be enough. Look at all this stuff here floating, you see it? Push it all down. Yeah, there's loads at the side here floating as well. This will all sink, I just want to make sure it floats just now. Right, so this is a little sponge filter. It's one of these really, really cheap ones. And it can go at the back of the side, and this will also help to cycle this tank because if you put mature filtration into a tank like this guess what happens the cycle time is cut in half almost so yeah we'll wait until this is almost fully full before we adjust that little filter let me quickly just hide the cabling because I have an excess of cabling here I'm bad for putting the cabling into the tanks and it just looks so bad you know cables from other filters. So let's get this uh, fixed here to the back. Where's the rest of it? It is out I think. So I think it's already on the filter. Let's put the filtration or air supply into this one. Now I might need to cut this here over line. Let me see. I don't need the plastic valve. Let's just put it straight on. It's very tough that cabling. Uh, I'm trying to do this. Oh, you mother. That's our little filter wants to float, you see it? Let's say make sure it gets some water in there. Uh, this might take some time, guys. Let me just increase the flow a wee bit. So yeah, the, the floor, the substrate, it doesn't matter what it looks like now because it will settle again itself. What we need to happen here is for this filter just to stay in one place get the filtration on and then give it time because we've already got a food supply in here we've added our bacteria powder there's actually some moss on that little filter as well turn up the power a little bit so I think what we'll do guys is we'll fill this up and then we'll head outside right I know guys I think this needs more leaves and stuff I think I need to put more leaves in general in a lot of my tank which we'll do uh, tomorrow I think maybe oh my god oh my god no laughing at the back. Oh god. Now you can see why I'm wanting to go away from doing this kind of stuff guys. Top tank stuff. Now let's fill this up. Let's get it on full blast. 
because it is uh, looking good. And then we can go outside and get some nettle, I think. Let me just quickly see where this one goes to, this filter, because I think we need to increase the power just a little bit. You know what it is, guys? I can't see. Oh! Let's see, where does this cable go? Yeah, because the power on that filter is like the absolute weakest thing ever. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Somewhere along here is the connector for this one. Yeah, I didn't design this very well, did I? So hopefully it's this one. It was, so yeah, it's barely on, that's why. There you go, we're cooking with gas. It's just almost filled. Is that enough, you think? It's going to be nice, this tank. Yeah, that is enough. I don't want to put too much water in it, right? So I'm going to bring you down here, guys. Alright guys, we have one more job for today before we go out for nettles and that is, I must remember to actually put some new leaves into my tanks. So I have uh, loads and loads of Indian almond leaves, but I like to use walnut leaves as well. Right? So I got these off my friend Pear. Let me just pull some out so you can see. And I do this guys, maybe every second week. Just a big handful of leaves like this. You can see them in the camera right, and I like to soak them in I just soak them in tap water my um, my tap water is actually river water we have a river that's probably about 500 meters away from here it's a big big river we have a, a pump house and stuff that has filters in it and all you can imagine what it's like inside this pump house right so let's grab a few handfuls of this and uh, fill it up with some water and this will do for our stuff tomorrow, right? you will see in a future video. This is take two because the previous take didn't work, so we are on the hunt for some nettles because guys, I have searched all around my house and I cannot find a single nettle. It's, it's ridiculous. In my old house, all I had to do was put one foot out the door and there was a nettle, right? But here it's very different. The countryside is very, very different from where we live now. As you can see here, it's mostly pine trees, some type of pine tree, bushes like cranberry bushes blueberry bushes and forests and whatever else and yeah we need to find some nettles because as you guys know it's been a mainstay food staple in my shrimp tanks for many many years and i'm kind of getting a little bit disheartened that i haven't found anything around my house yet which is a pain so we're going for a, a decent walk today lucy often goes for a better walk in the afternoon and it helps my back and stuff if i do a, a little bit of walking like this every day so this is what we're going to do let's see what we can find we cut all those bushes with the blueberries i just thought i'd show you that i love i love forests like this look it's just a sea of green most of the stuff will be up to your knees yeah i don't know if this will come out on camera but see the pole there it's a woodpecker sitting on it It's just went around the other side. I wonder if it will give it a bash for the camera. You, you can hear, maybe hear it. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodpecker. All right, guys, I think we may have found something. And it was correct, the assumption that I said before about it needing to be land that's kind of uh, turned over or something. You can see this has been, it's been a little bit processed here or there's been earth dumped here or something. But I thought I saw a nettle there. You see that plant right there? And then there's another one there, another one, I thought, wait a minute, are these nettles? I'm not sure if they are. But then I looked over there and I thought, yes, those are definitely nettles. Or are they? <laughs> yes, I'm not sure if these are nettles here. I'm just going to put my umbrella down a minute because it's uh, kind of awkward to hold all this stuff. Is this nettles? It feels like it, but... You know, the only way I'm going to be able to tell if this is a nettle is if I get stung. Let's see. Mm, that's not a good sign. I do know you get two types of nettle. That doesn't appear to be it, but they, these ones over there look like nettle. 
Let's see. Let's sting myself. What? They must be nettles. Unless they don't sting here. Yeah, these are nettles. They're stinging. There you go, guys. Look at all this. Result. So I don't know what that plant is there, but these are all definitely nettles. And there's loads of them. Hi right, guys, we got a little bag of stuff here. Which is a very small bag, but it's enough for today. Right, so we'll cook this up and we'll do a feeding so you guys can see it. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be coming back here with a couple of bigger Ziploc bags because you can pick them like this that I've just done. Put them straight in the freezer. And you'll be able to use these at any time, right? And it's free food. If you have nettles in your area, get out and pick some, all right? Well, hello there, shrimplets. Welcome back. It is the next day, right? So we have our nettles in our little jar like this. You can see it's all steamed up. A little jug. And the way I prepared this, guys, was I poured boiling hot water onto our nettles and I microwaved it twice for one minute exactly. Right, so since then, it's been another few minutes. So it's been sitting in, in here all that time. And the reason I do it that long, guys, is because I want the nettles to sink. The more you microwave them, the more softer they do get as well, but you actually expel all the air out of the leaves and stuff, right, and it makes them sink lovely. Right, so next we're going to have to cool these down because I don't really want to put boiling hot nettles into a shrimp tank. And all I have for that, guys, is a little bucket like this that has some water in it. And we're simply just going to add it to it like this. And all our nettles are now in here, and because we've done it this way as well, it's easier for me to sort out the sizes. And I'll be able to add them to the tanks like this, so let's do that now. Right guys, you're way down there. I'm just going to grab the bucket like this with a little handle. And um, we're just going to simply add the nettles to the tanks, and the appropriate amounts for each tank. Right, and guys, I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll have a look at the tanks. And we'll see how the shrimp have reacted to their food, right? Because I don't want to bore you with this. Me, you know, me putting stuff into the tank. We actually do have leaves to put into the tanks as well, but I think it's maybe a little bit too much to put into the tanks in one day, so we'll leave the leaves until next week, right? Which will be a week for you. Let's get this stuff in. And you can see, by me doing this, that the nettle here sinks. So nettles is an awesome free food, guys. You need to get out and collect some. I'm trying to not pick the hugest parts because some of these tanks are very, very fertile and the shrimp simply don't eat that much food yet until they deplete what's in the tank, the food source, because yeah, every, every tank is different. So let's get this in. I'll be back in a few seconds to show you the results. Alright shrimp, let's, let's have a quick overview. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah, there's a lot of shrimp in this tank. Oh, these guys were really hungry. They've munched that right up. Let's see. Okay. Now these ones are not on it so much. Yeah, they're not on it so much at all. I made sure I gave these guys an individual piece each, the crayfish. Made sure they came to the front and I gave actually gave them a bit. Hello there, Mr. Crayfish. Yeah, these endlers make very short work of this nettle. So you see what I mean, guys? I'm just going to go back to this tank a second because it's so nice. Get yourself out and get some nettles. Let's have a look over here. And so these were the newer shrimp here. And they've covered, coloured up really nicely, actually. I can see some potential because ones like this are definitely boa. You can see they're boa. So these are red. They kind of look like galaxies, but they definitely have boa genetics in them because you can see the big, massive face spots in them. So yeah, we can work with this. It's more at the back. There's not so many shrimp in this tank, but they look pretty active, looking good. Let's go across the top first. Yep, looking nice. Looking nice. 
You know, the, the reoccurring theme I'm seeing over here, guys, is I need to put more leaves in, which we are going to sort. I actually have them soaking in the bucket. This is the tank we did yesterday. Yeah, my, ta my tanks just lack a little bit of leaf litter. Looking good. Oh, guys, uh, let's see. Let me know in the comment section. Can you see the babies in the gravel here? Because there's a lot of them in this tank. There's some on the, on the food there as well. Super Crystal Reds. These are some type of bowl from Happy Space. Thank you, Raymond, if you're watching. These guys are gorgeous. There's a lot of bowl in here too. Galaxy fish bones. I'm waiting on these guys having their babies, which seems to be taking forever. Crystal is doing great as usual. So you can see guys what I'm saying about now, it's just a really really good food for shrimp. So we look at the cold tank. Yeah, they like that as well. Last tank is going to be the blue boltus. So I'm going to try zoom in here, I don't know if it's going to work or... Yeah, it kind of worked, a little bit blurry. Looks okay. Alright, so the shrimp are doing fantastic, as to be expected. New way, no water changes, feeding less. Shrimp are doing absolutely great, aren't they? So next week, guys, what we will have in store is a plant to take apart that tank inside. We're going to add those leaves to the tank. I'm just going to show you everything that I do in the shrimp room from now on. And uh, we probably have to start searching for some more tanks because yeah, this space up here is empty, so we'll do that too. Guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, then please go over here and watch another one right this will be some random video that youtube recommends to you from my channel right so go over there and watch it thank you very much have an awesome weekend i'll see you in the next one happy shrimp you man.